2015. Uh, I will take. Uh, I will accept a vote to um, chair this meeting temporarily. I move that we appoint um, Mr. Forte as a uh, chairman pro tem for the evening. Second. Any other discussion? All those in favor? That's four. Okay. So. Um, the uh, first order of business, uh, we're going to just um, skip right over um, anything that's on the list here and just, uh, we're going to, um, I'll accept the motion to continue the public hearing uh, on NSTAR Electric DEP file 182-0478 uh, uh, for reasons that the applicant has requested to extend to the next meeting. Uh, so moved. What's the date of that meeting? Uh, 21st, September 21st. September 21st at 7.30. So moved. Second. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? It's four. Okay. So you're off the hook. So well, be that more. was that was the one, the That's Edstar yep. one, mm -hmm. Eversource. Yep. Oh, okay. I, I don't want you to have to waste any more time. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. I was. I was. So it's been continued what's, until so what's the date again? September twenty first. Twenty first. September twenty first. Yeah. Okay. And you you can call the office prior to that and um, you know. Um, Ask if there's been any change. She was actually nice enough to take our numbers. Yeah, okay, yes, great. All right, terrific. Okay. So she should let you and know. And so, just for the record, too, Elaine Highland, that I am in opposition for that transmission. We can't line, accept so. any comments from you now because Nothing? the, the okay. discussion is not open right now. Oh, so. all right. Okay. Well, all so, right. for the record, it's not on the record. It's not on the record. <laughs> okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> You'll be on the record when we're back on the record the okay. 21st. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank good. you for okay. reporting the fact that you're not on the record. <laughs> As long as you guys know. Okay, that's right. <laughs> All okay, right, that's ladies. what's important. Thank you, Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. All right, and then uh, we'll, we'll get Mr. Gio so uh, home early if we can. Okay. So, the, have a good right. night. Thank you very much. Thanks. So, uh, under uh, old and new, um, we'll, we'll let Mr. Uh, Gio so um, take the floor. And this we'll regards to Dalton minutes. Terrace Extension. And uh, if you could just explain to me. Uh, Last year, we have applied. 401 quality permit DEP in the Army Corps. The Army Corps has approved it. The DEP has issued a letter of deficiencies. Okay. And they don't want to approve it unless we modify those two pocket wetlands that were on the side of the road. Before the Dalton Terrace used to take a 90 degree angle mm -hmm. uh, piece uh, curve. So we have to move with the the T a little bit way and put a retention pond mm -hmm. on the side. They don't want it. there's an intermittent stream here, bed. They don't want it, that to be touched. Mm -hmm. So we move this away, they indicated that this way would be acceptable. So within the next three days or forty days we should get the approval. Okay. I just want to let you know what's going on so you know. And so when I come back when they issue a letter of uh, that uh, all the deficiencies have been uh, okay. approved and it's been removed, then yep. I'll bring it back to you, the complete set of plans, and okay. then we'll go from there. All right. Uh, so just to let you know that, uh, yeah. what's going on, that's all. Okay, so so what Mrs. Joss will have to do is file an amended order conditions application. Everything else will be the same, except for the change in the roadway, probably. Right. And so that'll just be, it's another formal, uh, it's a public notice, so you'll have, have to go out and notify the abutters once again. If there's no comment from the abutters, then we'll accept the plan as amended. So, okay. all right. Just want to know what to yeah. do. So. Okay. Thank right. you so much. Great. Good all right. Thank you, Mr. Joseph. Great. Oh, and for the record tonight, uh, present are uh, Joe yeah, Davenport, uh, Rich Coombs, and uh, Kevin Barton, and myself, William Forty, as a appointed uh, nephew. Uh, temporary. Pro temp. Yeah. Yeah. Pro, <laughs> pro temp. Yes. Thank you. All right. So, uh, our final order of business here. Oh this, uh, this is quick. Uh, let's see. Uh, the enforcement order at 6 George Road, and uh, the owner is here tonight? I am. Mm -hmm. Yes, could you introduce yourself? Yes, my name is Jesse June. Hi, Jesse. How are you doing? And this is your attorney? I am. My name is Fred Scarrier. I'm a lawyer in Boston, mm -hmm. and uh, Madam Secretary was kind enough to uh, help me over the phone, I think. It, it wasn't me. It was Heidi. Heidi. So. So, um, there is an enforcement order I understand on this property. Yes. I've driven by, it looked to me like there was an area on the left side of the property from facing the front that was kind of stripped out. What, was your, what were your plans over there? What were you planning to do? Well, basically, um, the driveway, she just recently moved to, to, to uh, that area. Mm -hmm. 
In fact, I was the lawyer that that assisted Miss Jern, who was a decorated member of the armed forces after 20 years she retired and mm -hmm. purchased a home in Holbrook. And Welcome to Holbrook. <laughs> and my understanding, and she, you know, she loves the town. She was a, a small child that's going to school here. Sure. Um, it, it's just a, a typical, I guess, neighborly incident that happened. Uh, she's got the pictures. Someone that lives right next door to her was building a retaining wall. I believe the gentleman's son is a high-ranking police officer in the town. She says, look, um, prior to the purchasing the property, we conducted an instrument survey which outlined the uh, areas of the land. Uh, this particular piece of property was appealing to her because of the conservation lands around her. Mm -hmm. um, he had a bobcat, basically took down a lot of trees. She complained about it the very next day. Uh, basically said to her, I can make her life very difficult. The very next day, someone came into the property that said she was in violation. To answer your question specifically, um, the driveway abuts kind of like a small cliff. I don't want to call it a cliff. Because it's, it's a drop-off, yeah. It's a drop-off. Sure. And when she backs out of her driveway, mm -hmm. basically the tide drops. So sure. all she had done at this point was to just put gravel just to stop the runoff of the property because well, what she said is whenever it rained, she feel like it would continually eat on to, to her mm -hmm. driveway. She didn't put black tops down or anything like that. Sure. Uh, then she was uh, notified that she was in violation of encroaching over the uh, conservation park. Sure. And she didn't, she hadn't done anything. She didn't remove any trees or anything like that. And, uh, and then she contacted my office. Uh, yeah. I primarily worked out of Boston, um, doing a lot of 40B. And what I said to her is that in my experiences, it's best that we come in, explain to members of the board what we try to do, we don't want to have an adversarial relationship. Mm -hmm. I understand whenever people hear lawyers and they think it goes beyond that. All she wants to do is just maintain her home, mm -hmm. um, continue to live in the town peacefully, sure. and go out of business. Of course. Yeah. Great. So and we're certainly here to see, see you through to your rights to your property. Mm -hmm. um, based on um, the, um, I believe this is an as-built, is this an as-built? Yes, an as-built plan of what was here back when this was approved in 1998 okay so obviously you understand that there's wetlands there right that there it's a protected area and that any kind of alteration that you do to the surface whether it be altering dredging removing or filling uh, requires what's called a notice of intent with this board okay so uh, we're we're not saying that you can't do what you want to do over there but it has to be approved through this board we have to determine whether or not what you're doing is going to impact the wetland okay so we're not saying that you can't do it but what we're saying is you can't do it without a permit it's the same as building a house you know it's the same thing as building a house you need a building permit to, to build a house with you know the building inspector needs to approve it it's the same thing with this we're the board who, who approves or denies projects that basically are within 100 feet of a wetland area so anything you do on this property it, it appears to me that you have a wetland area here and there was probably there was probably at some point um, there was upland area here that you were allowed to build on and you were allowed to develop as a result of building a house, which is fine. Uh, you can have a copy of this. Do you have a copy of this? Yeah, you have a copy of everything that's in the folder? Okay. So so what you need to do basically is um, you need to propose what you want to do over there for a project in detail and then file a, a notice of intent with this board. Um, the notice of intent will basically notify the public that you're going to alter your land. Uh, you know, people uh, that abut you will have uh, a chance to weigh in along with the D Department of Environmental Protection. They'll be sent a, a copy of the notice as well, and they'll be able to determine if what you're doing over here is going to impact um, the, um, you know, the area in an adverse way. So, so you know, um, once you have this proposed project, this plan, you bring it to us, you file the notice of intent, we look at it. If we feel as though it's not going to adversely impact the wetlands, then we will give you permission in a form of what's called an order of conditions. In that order of conditions, it'll just explain to you basically what you need to do um, to follow certain guidelines with uh, you know best management practices with, with what you're dealing. We can't just like let a guy go in there with a machine and start stripping stuff out without our regulation. That's really the only thing you did wrong here. Now, as far as I can tell, as far as I can tell, you didn't bring any fill in, right? 
No, she didn't bring anything. All right, and that's great. And that's great because you know what? At this point, all it is is just removal of vegetation, which is not a big she deal. Didn't remove, we, she didn't remove the Okay, vegetation. well, it appeared to me that there was recently there was there was vegetation taken away from that bank. No. No. And I have a picture. Oh, okay. All right. Because I came and I spoke with Ivy uh -huh. at the time. Yep. And what you have from 15 years ago yep. was no longer the condition of the property when I purchased it. So you're saying it was altered so, by the time before, I you, it, before you bought the property was altered? That was in the fall that I purchased the home. Okay. And this is, I, I think, We have to print pictures. May I ask you a couple of questions? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Would the same uh, process be required if she was to build a retaining wall? Absolutely. If because her neighbor is building a retaining wall and he's within that buffer zone, then he, whether he's a Holbrook cop or a town manager, would be subject to the same regulations. Because the without, you know, without prejudice. The reason why we are asking is this: it's not a question that he's in the process. He actually built it. They brought in a bobcat, removed trees from the protected area. Yeah. And, and, and she has pictures of that. Yeah, that would be a violation. And, and I will just tell you that um, aside from this hearing, because this really is not relevant, um, I, would, I, would just, I would just tell you that um, you certainly could file a written complaint, and we will investigate it the same way we investigated this one. So either a verbal or written complaint is fine. Uh, we have a certain amount of time to go out and investigate and respond, and we will certainly enforce the regulations on anyone who's violating the Wetlands Protection Act in that street or in this town. So that's that's our purview, and we will we will follow through and make sure that we. And this is I can tell you this isn't the first time this has happened, you know, between neighbors. So unfortunately, you know, that's okay. the way it is. So um, this is currently what I did. I should look in here. So this is there's more pictures um, that show when I bought the property. Okay. I'm oh, sorry. Oh here. So, okay, so that's I what did not okay. touch anything. All right. I didn't destroy anything. I didn't remove any trees. Okay, this is all the debris. Okay. So the only thing that I've done was remove the trash. I see. Was yeah. Shot okay. Sure. Whatever left on the property. Yep. And this is what I've done. I just lay gravel. And okay. Property right. So, so where the gravel come from? The gravel. I purchased the gravel. Okay. Well, that's what we meant by. You. Yeah, so when you when you alter any land, whether it's gravel or not, um, right. gravel I, I bought the gravel and I put it on the grass where the grass was. If you look right here, there's grass at the end. You know, I, I couldn't walk in your yard, but I did drive by. And, um, so, because when you look, this is you, the property. Well, when you look from the street, it looks like you... But you have to get on the property. I can't go there without I, I did get permission. When I was here, the, because somebody had asked me, can they get on the property? And I said, yes, you okay. can. Okay. All right. So do we have your permission now yes, if we want to go walk at uh, right. some point sure. in the next week or two? Okay. And so there has not been no right. tree cutting, nothing no, at all. No, no removal of okay. bushes. Yep, no removal enough. of vegetation. So how many inches of gravel do you, did you put there, if you don't mind me asking? Or do you have an idea? Um, did you build no. it up three inches, no. a foot? No. Um, I think it was enough to just um, okay. I think it was enough to just stop the erosion of okay. the, the uh, property. All right. So she. So is it clean crushed stone? Is it washed crushed stone? Clean crushed stone. Is it is it along that entire embankment? Uh, just enough against the um, grass itself. Okay. So not in the embankment. So to bring it to the grass. Uh, how, how many feet of length is it? How many lineal feet is it? Is it 100 feet or is it? I would say last probably like 15 feet. Okay. Because it would be the length of the driveway. Okay. Itself. So it's just the driveway. Okay. All right. Yeah. So the, the extent of the violation is not overwhelming. And, and it's certainly something that if the board couldn't approve it, then it would it could be easily corrected. It's not like you've filled in 10,000 square feet of you know, pristine wetland or something. I mean, you know, it's a, it's a very minor violation. The reason for the enforcement order was to stop you from going any further until you got permission to do what you want to do over there. And that's simply the, the only reason, so. And what uh, I asked the board wasn't for the gravel. When I came in here, what I asked the board was that my intent was to go into, uh, I think the law say uh, 50 feet from the wetland. Mm -hmm. I have 100 feet from the wetland. So I wanted to get back that 50 feet. So to actually go further. And that's what I'm waiting for. And I haven't 
done anything. Yes. Yeah, so in order in order for you to in order for you to be able to do that with permission, you as I told you before, the process is that you'll have to file a notice of intent with the board. So we're not saying no, and we're not saying yes. We we really want to see the plan and see exactly what you want to do. And the only way for us to properly approve that is for you to go through a notice of intent. Okay. Um, you know, you'll have to hire an engineer, obviously. They're going to have to do a measurement, uh, tell us what the impacts are. You know, it, it may be a little bit costly in the approval state, but, but at the end of the day, if, if it looks like the board is going to approve it, then, um, you know, then you're probably going to just be able to do what you want to do, and it'll be legal and it'll be fair, and we will enforce any other regulations in that area that we now feel we need to enforce. Now, I know she's speaking with Heidi, and I specifically ask her not to continue further. Yep. I know in Boston, we can pull the public jackets. You sure can, yeah. Easy. Um, because uh, uh, I am told that we would ask the board's permission uh, to pull the jacket next door to see whether or not they, in fact, yep. had a, a, a permit on file. Um, Absolutely, yeah. That's all public record. Absolutely, yep. Yeah, and, and if the retaining wall is greater than four feet, it requires a building permit as well. But I would tell you that a retaining wall within 100 feet of a wetland, within 100 feet of a wetland, and it sounds to me like there is, would require a notice of intent through this board. So, um, you know, again, we will investigate that complaint upon request. And uh, that one of the reasons is that we're, we're complaint driven. We really don't go anywhere. We're not alerted to, yeah, you know what I mean? We don't police the wetlands, but when we have a complaint, we, we certainly deal with it and we do get, uh, you know, we do get results. Um, so sure. a little bit slow, but you know, unfortunately we don't have an enforcement agent that we can send out to get these things remediated quickly. But uh, but in this case, you know, it doesn't look like you're in a lot of trouble. It, it looks to, you know, of course there'll be no fines, no punishment. We just want to make sure that you're properly permitted for what you want to do over there. And, and nine times out of 10, this board is pretty liberal with allowing property owners to be able to do what they want with their property, provided that it's responsible and it falls within the Wellness Protection Act. So I think, I think we're, I think we're done unless the board has any comments that um, they want to. Joe, any comments? I mean, you probably approve this. This is Joe's been on the board for like 30 something years. So. Yeah, I was on the board back then. So, yeah, okay, so Rich was back then too. No, I just, you know, to remind you that you were in here earlier and we did send you a message after the meeting reminding you that we had discussed the property and that any work done to the left of the driveway would need a permit through the conservation board. Yeah. And that's why people got kind of worried. I think since that time she hasn't done anything. Yes. Yeah. Okay. okay. Um, part of it, I, I, you know, part of it is my fault. It wasn't you. I spoke with Heidi. Um, I make a part-time living teaching law school at BU, mm -hmm. you know, and um, in the graduate tax program, classes that I held after four thirty. Sure. So uh, usually a day meeting works best for me. Right. And I was told that the board only meets at night. So today I was able to go in and shorten my classes yeah. and mm -hmm. that's why I was running a little bit. So um, part of it was my um, problem. And I think I, I also sent in a letter and I was out of the country sure. for a short period of time and right. I asked for a brief continuance. So yeah, sure. my apologies to, to, to the board. Um, She'll be in compliance and um, yeah. we'll get a, uh, a surveyor as well as an engineer to draw up a plan sure. and then uh, go from there. Yeah, great. Terrific. Thank you very yeah, much. Yeah, we look forward to resolving this and we, we hope that, um, you know. So, in reference to the wall that's on the property, you were aware that I actually went into my property and well, you can show them the pictures. Yeah, what, what I'll tell you is that this isn't the forum for that because mm -hmm. we're discussing just your property. But I'll just tell you that you can come by the office tomorrow. Okay. Give us pictures, whatever you want to, you know, give us a description, whatever you have. Mm -hmm. And then we will look at it at, at our next meeting or one of the board members will go out and have a look at it. And we'll see if we can't get on the property and, and have a look. Okay. Take the pictures and then go in the jacket and you'll see whether or not there's a problem. Yeah, and like I say, the public record is open to you tomorrow during regular business hours. You can come in. No, and that, I mean, that assumes that something was filed. Yeah. I mean, if nothing was filed, then no jacket would exist. Yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, if that property was built outside of a wetland, there would be no conservation record. However, there will be a building department record of whatever's over there. So if the building department record may show that there's that it's out of the buffer zone and that it didn't need approval from this board, that could be very well true. Even though that person went straight on my property, there's like defined If, if he's within 100 feet of a wetland, I will just tell you that whatever work is going on there is required to come before this board. So we will get that, we will get that taken care of. Okay. All right. 
Thank you. Thank you. Right. Can you see this from your property? I can. Okay. So again, we have permission. Yeah. We have permission to divert, traverse your property for purposes of looking what you did over there, and and uh, and also investigating the other complaint. Okay. Okay. Right. Terrific. Okay. Great. All right. Thank you. Very, Very good. good. All right. Thank you for your time. Appreciate your understanding. All right. And so uh, there's no need to continue that because that's not really a hearing that is like an enforcement action. Did we take a vote to ratify the enforcement order back in the day when it was done? I think so because this yeah. is a continuation of the game. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Right. And the email that we sent, which was before, didn't work. Oh, okay. she was in the Oh, I see. And then uh, okay. the just got home. Okay. All right. Fair enough. No, that's fine. Okay. Yeah. No, I read. I also read the email from Tim in there. So there yeah. is a. Yeah. Okay. There is a record of what we say. Yeah. Uh, okay. All right. Well, we're gonna go over there and take a look at yeah, it. Yeah. Make sure it doesn't a, go any further. That was kind of like whatever they ended up with is what you had. Remember? Yeah. They yeah. Yeah. But it, it, it wasn't like Tim saw her spreading the, the gravel. He mm -hmm. just went there and said it looks like. Right. So he was just confused too because he went and spoke right to her and said. Hold up! Yeah. Don't do any more. Right. And she, she was did like, it. What I can do? What I can. Mean. Okay. Well, she she was here with her attorney. They understand yeah, their so instructions. They got it done. All right. Good. Great. What else do we got on public record? Do we have anything nothing. that we have to do on public? Just have a couple wow. vouchers to sign. All right. If there's nothing further, I will take a motion to adjourn uh, public. No, meeting. we have a couple minutes to check. <laughs> if you want to read those minutes. Oh yeah, that's right. We have, we have two minutes. minutes. Oh, okay. We got to approve that inside. Okay. Please. All right. Great. <laughs> All right, so you guys tell me what you want to approve and not approve. I was not here. Uh, I cannot testify to the facts. Yeah. I have the order pack of July 20th. I'm just going to uh, sign stuff. That's what I'll do. I'll sign. That's what I do uh, all day in the city of Walton. I sign. Can, can you get a legal rubber stamp? I have it. Yeah. <laughs> I have it. I do. The mayor says you can use it, but you've got to use it. thing I might say on July 20th, um, in the first section, halfway mm -hmm. through, construction of the project, project will result in comparable minimal temporary impact. I probably said comparably, but I, I just think we don't need the word comparable there at all. It's just confusing. Mm -hmm. Okay. So just, let's just we strike that. And I think everything else on this one looked okay to me. Anyone else have any? <laughs> then I, I nothing from you. No. Okay. So I move we accept the minutes of July twentieth as.
correct it. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? That's three and one abstention. I was in there. So. Oh, you weren't? Okay. I don't know if we can approve. Yeah, so we can't approve yeah, that thing because yeah, you were not. Yeah, I can't. Yeah, you can't can vote. vote. And Kevin yeah. wasn't here. Okay, so we can wait till next yeah. week. Okay, so we'll table that until the next meeting. Table Any other public business? Motion uh, to adjourn the public meeting. Yeah, that's right, because the next one, we've, it's just. Oh, Richie was the only one. <laughs> Richie and Kevin were at the. the uh, okay, next. so we can do it. So, yeah, okay, we can't, we can't so do that we one can. either. Okay. Thank you for signing, Jeremy. Nope. Motion to adjourn. Second the motion. I have a discussion. All those in favor? Four to nothing. Meeting is over.